Stopped by the Time Magazine as the Rattan's first grade virtuoso. Please welcome, really loudly, Mr. Kenneth Kawapo. Hi, good evening everyone and thank you Tessa for that uh, introduction. I'm very honored to be part of the Spectre launch since the first launch um, and uh, I've always believed that we share, my work shares a lot of uh, um, common ideals with the uh, HP Spectre line. I always believe that um, the art objects, the objects of today, like a, our cell phone, a laptop, a sneaker, are the art pieces of the 21st century. So let me show you um, a bit of my work. You know. um, can we go to the next slide? Okay, so the title of my uh, presentation is called Complementing Art. You know? And so the difference between design and art is that design has a function and a, there's a, a purpose. You know? And uh, Next slide, please. And that's why I'm uh, very fascinated with simple objects like baskets. Uh, because um, a basket has a purpose, it's meant to carry things, and it's beautiful because every part is there for a purpose. Maybe I should stand here so you can see the presentation. Okay, so my one of my first chairs, called the Baloo, was designed like a giant basket. You know? And it carries the same uh, principles as the as a basket. Every piece is there uh, uh, it is there for a purpose, and that's to hold the whole thing up. And as you can see, um, you see right through my designs, so the interior has to be as beautiful as the exterior, because there's no, I'm hiding the parts that support it. Um, it's made out of steel, rattan, and uh, abaca. And by bending rattan at slight angles, it makes it stronger. You know, and the abaca is there to hold everything together. Okay, next slide please. Okay, and so I'm inspired by nature. And in fact, I found nature to be very beautiful, especially when the sunlight uh, uh, filters through it, because it creates uh, layers and layers of pattern. So you see the branches, and when you go look at the leaves, you see another pattern emerging, and so on. If you look at the leaf from uh, here with a microscope, you will see different patterns emerge. And so I wanted to make uh, Designs, my designs like that. And so th my first design, uh, called the Yin and Yang, in 1998, has that same transparency where you see through it. And as an example, um, on the balcony here, you see that the, the, the chairs don't block the view. In fact, when you sit in it, the air passes through. So it's cool um, and uh, it, it's, it's very open, just like you know, look, you're looking through branches, you're looking through trees. Um, and so this was this became the staple, the, the look that I was known for in the whole world of design, you know, because um, this is made this is called a croissant, um, and it has it's made out of steel and uh, buri, you know, the same um, like the Wallis Wallis Ting Ting. That's the same piece, uh, and uh, I'm inspired by all things nature, like the human body. This is called the pigal. And uh, it's, it's inspired by the human form. And as many as 3,000 knots are used to tie the abaca rope onto that hand sculpted frame of steel. Yeah. And this piece, um, the Korean Museum of Modern Art called it the perfect example of Southeast Asian design. Yeah. Um, thank you. And here, um, you, you see the pieces, they look like they belong to nature, you know, they're organic, you know, in, in, in nature there are no straight lines. So that's why this chair is very curvy. Um, it came from nature and belongs to nature. And so I've been always asked, what's what's your inspiration? You know, there is no formula for inspiration. So I'm inspired by everything, you know, from things as mundane as a Coke can, you know. This became the inspiration for a chair called the uh, Lola, you know. And it won Asia's highest award for design in 2005, called the Design for Asia Award, given in Hong Kong. And this, this award was usually given to uh, big uh, industrial products like, uh, you know, um, Sony, uh, HP, uh, uh, you know, Samsung. They're always industrial products. But this year, they, that year, they awarded it to a rattan chair, and it's the only time the Philippines has won that award. 
that's the so inspired by anything. So blades of grass became inspiration for the Yoda chair. Okay, yeah, and uh, a bowl of uh, noodles became inspiration for the noodle chair. <laughs> and uh, and this is my own version of sheep. Okay, called Harry. And this is Harry now in its natural habitat. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even things, simple things like dim sum steamers became the inspiration for a line of coffee tables called dim sum, <laughs> made out of leather and bamboo, and stitched leather. Um, okay, next slide. So I'm inspired also by our culture, you know, and the cultures of other countries that I've visited. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Cebu, I still live in Cebu, and uh, fishing plays a vital role in the lives of our people. And this is a design of mine called the Amaya that's inspired by fish traps. And uh, you see when the light hits it, it creates very beautiful shadows on the ground, you know. That chair is called a dimple, because it's like dimples on the cheeks. You know? And when you stack them, the back legs go in there. So I'm very fascinated by, by everyday things, like fishing, so I, I love fishnets, so I decided to work and experiment with my own version of uh, weaving techniques, and I came up with a chair called the dragnet, you know, one of my favorite pieces. Why do I like it? Because it doesn't use rattan, you know? so now it uses uh, fabric, okay? So now I began to experiment with color. This is the Hagia, uh, Sofa, which is uh, inspired by the Hagia Sophia Cathedral in Istanbul. Um, this is my own take on a Filipino icon, the peacock chair. You know, I designed this about three years ago, and uh, it's been very popular. This, of course, the voyage bed. I have to thank for. I have to thank Brad Pitt for her. For her. Otherwise, I won't be speaking in front of you here today. You know, um, this is one of the most photographed. Uh, beds. Yeah. Um, and in everything I do, everything I do is always a testament to Filipino craftsmanship. And that's what I really, you know, I really sell to the world. That's what I'm all about. You know. So I want to show you some pieces and how they're made. Uh, the, uh, this piece is called the La Luna Chair. It's used by, uh, by uh, Google and uh, Nike in their, it's called their thinking chair in their offices, in their headquarters. It won also an award in New York. This is how it's made. It starts with a shell of rattan, and we take the shells out from the mold. They look like these. And then we put wooden legs on them, and then uh, recycled foam, and then jute sack, also recycled jute sacks. And then the weaving starts out of a rattan split. Okay, and after 48 hours, um, it looks like that, you know? And so the beauty about this design is that there are two patterns, one finer one on the inside and one coarser one on the outside, like that. And now the craftsman has to take both patterns and stitch them together seamlessly, like this, and there. And so this is a testament to Filipino craftsmanship. And s several people have tried bringing this to other countries, like Indonesia, and they can't do it. So this is another piece. Um, so this is still one of our best-selling chairs today. This is another piece called the Tilt, and it uses wood, uh, American walnut. Next slide, please. Okay. So this is one of the most complicated chairs to build. You know, it's like building a miniature house, and uh, in our factory of about 300 people, there are only to qualify to make this chair. So it's cut at several angles, and there, and we use dowels precisely to fit all the pieces together. It's really like building a miniature house. And this is the tilt chair. You know? So in all my designs, I try to make it as complicated as possible so the Chinese can't copy it. <laughs> so, um, another design of mine. This is a newer design called Limbo. Now it uses uh, steel. Um, and this is really also one of the most tedious things to do because it's a life-size, like building a life-size mannequin. Yeah? 
like that. And it takes about two weeks to make one figure. And it's like a circus performer. Um, we have four of those. We have girls swinging from chandeliers and one juggling balls and uh, holding candles in the air. And this is a breakthrough product for me. It's called the Bloom. And the Bloom is made out of microfiber that's finely stitched. This is a breakthrough product not only for me but also for the country because no one makes uh, upholstered pieces like this and sells them around the world. You know, this is because everything here is imported. The foam is imported. Uh, you know, the, the fabric is imported, and so, um, but it's just the, the amount of work involved is really like making a gown, you know, each piece. Um, it requires a lot of strength and dexterity to pull that thread through that thick cloth. You know? And it's been one of the most successful chairs. You know? And uh, when we made this chair, people said that no one would buy this product from the Philippines because it's not a typical, it's a you know, it's typical, it's a thing that you would buy in Italy or you know, other places, but not from here. It's been one of the most successful designs. Um, in everything we do, you know, like HP, there's always innovation. You know? And so, I was very inspired by sweaters and the structure that I decided to take this and blow it up. And I made a design called the Cabaret. It's like a gigantic knit um, sofa. Um, and these are the, yeah. so this is also a, a breakthrough product. This was done about 10 years ago, you know, before the Italians started doing it. And uh, yeah, but I've collaborated also with other designers. This is from the Belgian fashion runway. Um, and mobility, you know. I believe that what we have, what we've discovered here in the country can extend to other things, uh, other industrial products like transportation, and this is my take on the bamboo bicycle. Yeah. The problem I think with most bamboo bicycles is they look like steel bicycles that just look, replace the parts with bamboo. So I decided to design them differently to use bamboo for what it is. Um, then I designed a car called the Phoenix. I think you've seen it around. Um, this I did to join the Milan show and it's got a lot of uh, good reviews even from the major car manufacturers. You know, this is in Mercedes-Benz magazine. Um, I got invited by Volkswagen to speak to their designers about merging natural materials with industrial products. You know? And it's even in an ad in Belgium's biggest bank. You know, It's called Tomorrow is What We Make It. It's been used in a lot of, uh, and this is, this is the uh, eclipse. I wanted to bring back the romance of the tricycle. Um, and this is Eclipse now in Paris. So this is, uh, there's a cover for the sides, for the back, there's a GPS, there's a <laughs> up holders on this thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and this is, oh, this is an ad done by Philippine Star um, that went around the world, you know, for the, for the Phoenix. This is how it's made. Design is nothing but art with a purpose. You know? so, to end this, I'm going to show you some of the newer designs for those of you who have been down to the first, second, third launch. You know, probably thinking this is the same things I'm showing showing you. So these are some of the newer designs over the last two years. This is called Babar. It's like a workstation. Uh, the ears are actually cork boards. Everything opens up, the drawers, everything. And the tail is like a little broom that you use to sweep. You know. Uh, it's a fun piece, it closes in. You know, I think design is always fantasy. This is like lasso, this is inspired by the stork carrying the baby. You know? See, there's a bird uh, up on top there. Um, and uh, this is called Apollo. It's like a miniature tree house, okay? That sofa there. And these are pieces I designed for uh, a foundation inspired by Filipino bolts in Banca. You know, it's called. It's a. Um, it's a foundation that uh, sends, you know, uh, kids to school. It's called Vuvel. Now these are some of the pieces that came from there. 
this is the line is like a canopy tray inspired by the banka. Yeah. And these are some of the newer pieces uh, that we will show in Milan for the first time. Yeah, this is uh, called the Zoe. It's like a, uh, a recliner where you sit on the floor. Okay. And this is a bag, a suitcase I designed for Tumi um, years back using ballistic nylon and uh, and bamboo around it. And this is called Russell. It's inspired by that movie Up, you know, with the, with the balloon, with the, you know, um, and it's one of the most uh, romantic pieces in the collection. Okay, so that ends my presentation. Um, thank you very much, and everyone. Thank you very much.